So today I'll be going through the, the code and run it uh, live as we are going through the chapter. Uh, so uh, before starting, do you have any comments or something? Uh, or... No, no, go ahead. Okay, great. So let's start. Uh, okay, so uh, hello everyone. I would like to welcome you to another session of uh, a network analysis using R. Uh, so the topic of today's chapter is ego networks. So uh, in the previous two chapters, we have already introduced uh, introduced networks and network structure in R and how to visualize networks. And today we'll start to have uh, some uh, applications that can you can meet in your day-to-day uh, -day application or something that uh, it's not a toy example anymore. Yeah? So we'll be working with a larger set of data and we will be working on a more complex setting. Uh, so the, the name is interesting. It's like an ego network and we'll have uh, a better understanding on uh, why it's called ego networks uh, as we go through the chapter. So uh, the learning objectives of today is to have an understanding of uh, the strategies to analyze many networks at once and learn about ego networks. And if we have time, we'll uh, be able to look at network density and heterogeneity. And when we are talking here about many networks at once, we are talking about, uh, for example, if you have multiple individuals and these individuals, each of them have their own social network and you are analyzing a large set of data you can't keep doing, uh, and you would like to do the same set of commands and apply it to everyone. Uh, you can do use functional programming in R, like using uh, the apply family, l apply, s apply, or the apply family, and then try to structure your code so that you can apply the same set of commands to all the individuals in your data. Uh, so yeah, let's start. So the two packages that we'll need today is uh, iGraph and Tidyverse. So let's, oh yeah, okay, so it's running. So I'll load the packages and then we will read the data. So the data that we'll be reading is called GSS. Uh, I will give you an introduction about the data, but first let's read it. Yeah, the data is part of the GitHub repo of the book. So here, uh, the, I don't have the data locally. It's uh, the URL from GitHub. So here I have the, the URL and I will read the data. And now we can look at this. Oh, the mic, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so then let's have a look at on the data. So as you can see, it's a, uh, 14, uh, 41 columns and you have around 1,500 rows. So when you have a data on this scale, you can't just look at it with a print or everything in your in the in the console, yeah? So today I will show you like one way and where that will allow you to look at all the data in your in your table uh, at once in a visual way. So there's a package called visData. And from this package, I will use a function called visDat. And I will pass the, the table and I will just, what would this function do is that it will make a, a plot out of all of the columns that we have, yeah? And it would, uh, so here each column is uh, one of the columns in our data. So here we have uh, 41 columns. And then we have uh, the, the rows are the number of ob observations. So you can see on the top it's zero and then it goes uh, uh, around 1,500. And the good thing about this is that you can look at each column and see uh, if the, the expected type of this column matches the type in the, in the table. So for example, you expect the sex and race to be a character. Uh, so, and as you can see here, it's characters, but sometimes you can uh, get a uh, sex, uh, maybe it's a uh, zero and one, or uh, some uh, might, might be stored in a binary or an, a numeric. So this would give you an idea that there is something wrong with your data. But in our case here, we can see that things like six race, uh, party ID, the political party, the religion, and uh, education here, you can see that there is something uh, different here that you can, if you looked at the education, some of the education one, two and three and five, one of them is numeric while the other is character. So there is something going wrong here. And if you look at the age, we can see that all the age is numeric. This is good. 
and we look at the religion. So all the religion are characters. So this is also good. Yeah. Uh, I will introduce each column and what do <laughs> what each one of them uh, mean. But first, I wanted to uh, show you this this approach of uh, exploring the data initially. Uh, so in this data, the first five columns, so uh, they represent the attributes of the individuals in our data. So for each individual, we have the sex, the race, the age, and the party ID and the religious the religion for this individual. Yeah. So if you could subset only this uh, this part that contains the attributes of the individual, we can uh, because we have five attributes. I will set this object to five. And then I will subset for uh, from the table the columns from one to five. And yeah, and we'll get we we'll, now we are looking only on those uh, sets. Yeah. So we have here the. Let me zoom in. Can you see? Can you see it when I zoom in? Actually, I'm not sure. I, I think it stays the same for us. Oh, ah. but then your cursor looks like it's loading, so maybe there's something wrong with the share screen. Okay, so I, it would be better to maybe make it like this. Okay, but now you can see that the plot is larger, right? Yeah, now it's okay. I think. Okay, great. So what I'm showing here is that I have subsetted only the first five columns that indicate the attributes of the individuals, which are sex, race, age, party ID, and religion. Uh, and uh, what you would notice is that you have here we have three colors. We have the characters, we have the numeric, and both of them uh, matches what we expect about any of these columns. But also we have these bands, like uh, gray bands, and this is uh, these are uh, missing data. Yeah. So beside Knowing what the types of columns and type of uh, data that we have in our table, uh, this visual way allows you to quickly look at the missing and assess how how much uh, of the data you have uh, is missing. Yeah, here here as you can see, we have some of them, but it's it's not uh, it's not a, dr a drastic. Right? Yeah, it's a, we don't have many missing data. Uh, so this is it for the attributes. The rest of the forty one columns is uh, represents the network structure, the ego network. So uh, I think that this data was part of a survey. And what they did is that they made a survey and asked around 1,500 person about people that they know, uh, six people that they know, and they are close to them. And they have been discussing some uh, topics. So the, here, uh, so the basic idea of the module is to ask people about the five others whom they discussed important matter with, yeah, in the past six months. So the rest of the table is information about the others. The first column is a num given. So this is the number of others whom they re the responders discussed important matter. So for each one, uh, this column would give you the number of people that are close to this person and they usually discuss the important matters, yeah? And then we'll have a set of columns all start with close. And these columns actually, they represent the relationships between each of these people and whether they, are, they know each other or they don't know each other uh, and the, the magnitude of closeness between those other people. And finally, we'll have for each of those others, the, the important people who will collect the sex, race and age from them. Yeah. Uh, so let's look at this part of the data. So here it's a uh, 36. Sorry. No. So uh, the data, it's 40, we have 41, 41 column. And we'd like to look at all the columns except the attributes. So here I will subset the I will subset the table. I will select the all the columns from six to forty one, because the first five are attributes, and I don't want to look at those. So here, let's run this and look at 
the rest. So as I've said, the first column here is the number given, the num given. So this each each uh, row here represent uh, contains the number of important people to each respondents, and then you have the close columns. So these these are the all the possible links between uh, those important people, and we can see that here the the data become start to become sparse and uh, sparse or or very have a lot of missing data, and you might think that this might be a problem, but usually when you work with network data, it's a, it's a desirable feature of the data to be sparse. So you don't want a network where all the connections are available. Like imagine a network where everything is connected to everything. This means that, yeah, you, you, don't, you can't get a, a pattern or there is uh, the structure is, you can't obtain a structure for an underlying structure or look at a certain feature of the network. So usually, uh, having missing data or some sparsity in the data, not too much, but having some sparsity is in the network is a desirable feature. So keep this in mind. Uh, but uh, if you look at the, the name of the columns, uh, it will be close one, two, close one, three. So the one and two, these numbers, uh, represents the, the, the other people, the other important people to each respondent. So to each respondent, respondent there will be five close people and each column would uh, define the magnitude of closeness between any two pairs. So the first one uh, shows the closeness between uh, other one and the other two. And the next one is between the first one and the third one. And the uh, third one is between the first one and the fourth one. Uh, is this part clear? Because we'll be relying on this part of the table a lot. OK, great. Uh uh, it's clear, but uh, th this magnitude are, are basically uh, a part part of the original data set. Is is that right? So it, it, go on. Sorry. Uh, I mean, for example, uh, uh, a value of two for close one three. It's uh, it's entered by the data collectors or the yeah. survey collectors. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So it was part of the survey. So for each respondent, they asked them of the closest five persons, and then they asked them, okay, for those five persons that you know very well, uh, what is the, the link between those five persons, if you know them? So if two persons from these important uh, others know each other, they will give them a, a large score. If they don't know each other, they will give it zero. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, that's clear now. Awesome. And after, uh, followed by this set of columns, we have the sex of the five others, the race of the five others, the level of education of the five others, the age and the religion. So this is all the data that we have. I hope that it's clear now. It's usually worth it to dig deeper into the data and have a good understanding before uh, yeah, jumping onto to the analysis. It's boring, but it's necessary. So what we'll do now is that we will select the, the part of the data that represents the connections between the others. So this would be the columns called close that define the, all the possible links between the others bear. Yeah? And to do this, we will take our data here and we will pass it to this function called select from the deployer package. And uh, this function, you can use uh, you can either state, manually state all the columns that you need. So for example, you would make a vector and in this vector, you will have close one, two, close one, three, close one, four, or you can make it in a, a smarter way, which is to use a helper function called start with within this function. So here I'm saying to select, to only select the function that starts with close, yeah? So when we run this, we can see that we get a new, a table that contains all the columns that have close, that start with close. So these are the columns that represent the connections. Um, I, I have to point out that uh, I, I try to, sometimes I try to translate the code from the book in a tidy way. So for example, if you looked at the, the way that the author tried to make this, it was a bit lengthy. And here I try to use a tidy approach to make the same tasks. Yeah. So when you're looking at the, the, this code and the code in the original book, there might be some differences, but they try to approach the same thing. 
Okay, and awesome. Uh, and now is is the part that uh, yeah, the, the important part of of the chapter, which is uh, here in this ties, the in this uh, table. So at this table, it's, you have ten columns, and we have a uh, thousand five hundred around thousand five hundred uh, respondents. Yeah, and what what we'd like to do is to make a network for each individual. This would be the ego network. I think they call it an ego network because if you have a big ego, you would define everything around you relative to you. Yeah. So here you are trying to define the connections between the people based on the the connection between the people based on what you know about them. And you are at the center of this network. So this is the, the ego network. Maybe this is right or wrong. I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, this is the goal now, uh, is to take this data, this table, and out of this 1,500 rows, we need to make 1,500 networks. Great. Uh, so what, uh, what the, the author tried to do is to make a function that would take these tables, each row by row, and apply a set of uh, transformations so that we end up with an adjacency matrix and make a graph out of this. So let's look together on uh, the approach that he took to make this, okay? So uh, this is the function, and I will walk you the, through the, the content of this function. Uh, it's called make egonets. And the first step is to, the, the, the input would be uh, individual rows. So individual rows would represent individual, individual individuals, okay? And the first thing is that we'll make a, a matrix, and this matrix would be empty matrix. So it's, it's, it's actually, it says, oh, everything is NA and it's five by five because the size of the, of, of the network is five by five, okay? And the second thing is to take the, the row and then convert it to as numeric. So for example, let's take this tie and take a random row from this table so that we can work with, yeah? So let's take the first row here. Here, the first row is all in A. Let's take the third row, okay? And let's look at it. And here we have a table, a table, a table, or a table, and it's a single row. So this represents all the lengths among the others of the individual in the third row. Okay, so here we do is we make it a numeric. So we convert it from a table to a vector of numbers. And then we take the matrix that we have defined. And what we would like to do is to, because in the adjacency matrix, it's a symmetric structure, it's a symmetric matrix. So we will start to assign the links between the individuals, uh, first for the upper part of the matrix and then for the lower part of the matrix. So the matrix is symmetric. So we have a triangle at the top and the triangle at the bottom. And what we do is that we will use a function in R called lower triangle. So if you call this function and give it the matrix, you will see here that it says the lower, it will give true to the lower entries of the matrix here, true, true, true. And everything else would be false, yeah? So now we can assign the values to this part of the matrix. So here, and take another look on the data. And we can see that uh, the data, from the links among the, the others are now assigned to the lower part of the matrix. And because we know that uh, the adjacency matrix is symmetric, so we'll need to do this also for the upper triangle. So we will use a, a, a function that's called upper triangle. And now if we just call it, uh, sorry. So yeah, so uh, opposite, to the previous function, this will give true to all everything in the upper triangle of this matrix and false for everything else. So when we assign values to this function, we will assign the value, the values will end up in the top uh, triangle of the matrix. So let's do this as well. And now let's have a look on the matrix. Okay, so now we have a symmetric matrix. I think there was a, a function called is, is symmetric. Is it? Yeah, is da, da, da. yeah is symmetric. Yeah. 
Okay, it's true. Yeah, so it's symmetric. That's good. Uh, but now, as you can see, uh, we need the adjacency metric to be a numeric matrix. And here uh, it's numeric, but we have some missing data. Yeah. So these missing data are uh, links that are not there. Yeah. So these are missing links or not missing links, but uh, they might not be missing. They are not there in this network. Uh, because here we have a matrix that represents all possible links. Yeah. But uh, in reality, for this individual, all those others, uh, they don't all know each other. So to do this, we'll use a function called uh, is in A. And when we pass the matrix to is in A, it will give us true. It will give us a logical output, true for all the NA values and all everything that is not NA will be false, yeah? So if we run it, we'll have, uh, you could compare the one at the top and the bottom here. If you have NA on the diagonal, for example, everything on the diagonal is NA. It's, uh, it's missing data. So we will put this here. We have the matrix and then we will uh, look at and identify the rows where all the values are missing. So what you would like to do is to take the NA values and then look, for example, for some uh, individuals in those others that are not connected to any of the others. So what to do this, we will take the, the matrix and then sum the values along the rows. And when you sum the logical values, the true is one and false is zero. So for example, if you have uh, an individual that is not connected to any of the others, so it, it has false everywhere. So this would be, uh, if it has false everywhere, then it would be zero, yeah? But if it is connected to uh, everything, it will be connected to the other four. So you will have a score of four. So let's look at this. So here we get two, 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 and five. And if we go back to the matrix, we can see that for the first individual, it's connected only to uh, here. So it's not connected, so, sorry. It's, uh, this is the missing data, sorry. So it has missing data in the, in the first one and it has missing data in the last one. And then we'll compare this missingness to the number of rows in the matrix. And we would see that, for example, we have uh, for four out of the five individuals, these individuals have, uh, at, so the, the last individual, let's put it like this, the last individual is missing connection with any of the other uh, individuals, yeah? So here we will get false. But for the other individuals, at least they have one connection with one of the other individuals. So we'll get true. So because the number of the number of uh, missing values is less than the number of individuals. So here, this would be the case. And if we go quickly back to this matrix, we can see why the last one is false because it's missing any connections with, with any of the other uh, individuals in this network. And then we'll yeah, use an uh, if, if in any row, so uh, here we'll have this vector that we have defined of non-missing rows. And then we will take, we'll use this exclamation mark to take the opposite and take the sum. And here we can see there is, uh, I have one, at least one row. There is one row that is missing all the connections to everything. And what we'll do is that we will uh, remove this row from the, from the matrix. So, this is what the matrix looks like now. And we, if we apply this if close, we will get this. So we'll get rid of the last individual. And to end this part, we will uh, put replace the NA values, the missing values in the diagonal with zero. So we will use a function called diag here. So this function will give you the values in the diagonal and we would set the NAs to zero like this. And finally, we have the adjacency matrix. Yeah, and this is what we need to make our network. So we'll use from iGraph a function called graph adjacency. So it will make a graph out of an adjacency matrix. You pass the adjacency matrix. You also set the mode to undirected and weight to true. So it's weighted matrix. And here we have our function that we, sorry, here we have our graph, yeah. So 
to, to, to be honest, like uh, f- from my experience with other uh, book clubs, you, like usually the speaker don't have to go in length for each part of the code to have an idea, just to give an idea. So please let me know if I don't need to do this or it's uh, just I'm overcomplicating stuff. Yeah. But I just wanted to show what this function does because I also know that uh, Abdurrahman is, is not a very very experienced with R. So I, I wanted to give a very beginner introduction to what the function is doing. So anyway, so here we have a function that when we apply to any of the rows of our data, it will make a network out of this ego network. Uh, before moving further, are there any questions about this? Any parts here that was not clear or, or why it was done or? For me, everything is clear. Uh, that was a great breakdown. Okay, awesome. Thank okay. you. Abdurrahman? Yeah, I just had a tiny, teeny tiny question about okay. the part where we compared the row sums uh, less than n row of math. So uh, I still don't quite understand how can this systematically detect the rows where all the data are missing? And, oh, you know, okay. if we scale this to larger networks, how is that going to work? Okay, so let's look at it by a bit. So here we have uh, three, yeah. So what we have here is that we have uh, NA vals. So this is the object that we have calculated in the previous step. So the way we did this is that we took the matrix. So let's start everything. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and now we have the matrix at this step. Yeah, And this matrix uh, is, you had, First, you had a scaffold, an empty scaffold of this matrix, yeah? And this scaffold represents all the possible connections between the individuals, but this scaffold is empty. In the next step, we try to populate the available connections, the available links between those individuals, starting by the upper part of the matrix and then doing the same for the lower part to get this symmetry, yeah? So, so far it's clear, I, I think it's clear to you, right? So the first few steps. Yeah. Excellent, yeah. yeah. So the next is to, uh, when you are making your network, you, you wouldn't add anything or if you have uh, a component that is not connected to any of the other parts, yeah? So if you have an individual and this individual is not connected to any things, in, at least in the ego network, uh, this wouldn't add to your story. So this wouldn't add to your network and it wouldn't be part of the network and we would rather exclude this individual, yeah? So what we do here to define this ind- individual that is uh, lacking any connection with the other, we use a function called isNA that would define the, the missing values. So this will give you true when you have a missing link and false if things are not missing. Now you can th- think how this would work if, if an individual is missing all the links to all uh, miss, missing links to all the individuals, you will get true across the whole row. So, for, for example, for the fifth individual here, because it's lacking everything, all the connections, you will get true across everything. Yeah. So now this is also easy to get. Yeah. But how can we quantify this uh, missingness? So the easy way is to look at the sum of the rows. So if you have, if you, if we take the sum here. So you will get five for the last row. And this would mean that you have five missing values. So if you do this, it would show you the, the number of links that are missing because here we have is in A. So this would show you the number of links that are missing. And we actually have an individual that, are, that is missing all the connections to all the other individuals. Okay, so how to get rid of this uh, individual. So first we, we might uh, we might not know how large our network is. So to know how large our network is or how many individuals in our network, we use n row. So this would be the number of individuals in our network. And we can see that, yeah, so for, for one of them, it has, a, it, it has, a, sorry, sorry, yeah, five and it's okay, n row. So essentially, this means that it's not less than, but it's equal to the number of rows. So essentially it's missing all of the um, row values. 
right? Uh, in this case, columns, yeah, but they're exactly. equal. So, yeah. exactly. so it, it, it can be either less than or equal. And when it's equal, then it sort of produces a false value in that statement. And that's how I know that these are, the row there is missing. And, and I see now, yeah, yeah that is probably, okay. I get it, thank you. And, and sorry if I'm taking much of the book club. No, sorry, it's, yeah. it, it, it's okay, yeah. I, I hope it, uh, to be honest, like usually you'll need to read the, the code multiple times and then uh, try to run it and then try to use different matrices just to, for the, for things to hit home, yeah. But uh, so this is how the, 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 the author defined this function to get the, the ego network, yeah. So what I try to do is to try to use another approach that is should be simpler and more intuitive. Yeah, and, but let's see if this is true or not, yeah. So we have this object, it's called Ty and it represents the third individual in the, in the matrix. So what I will do is that I will first convert it to a vector. So here it's a, from a row, now it's a vector. And I would remove, I will start by removing the missing links. So I don't need those missing links because they don't add anything. So let's remove it by using is in A and uh, taking the opposite. So it's, it will keep the, the links that are not in A, yeah? So next I would look at the, what I would do is the trick that I would use is I would make use of the name of the columns because these names, it defines the, the pair, so, yeah, right? So what I do here is that I take the column names and I extract the numbers in these columns. So for example, the first column, now I know that this, it, it defines the links between uh, the first individual and the second individual. And the, th the second column, it defines the links between the first and the third, yeah? So this is the trick to uh, utilize the names of the columns in this function. So now we have a vector uh, called others. Uh, and next, what I would do is I will split these vectors into a matrix. So I will use a function called string split. It basically does sp split the, the, the vectors and I give it an empty, uh, I give it an empty vector. So this is the pattern that it would split the, each vector. So because it's empty, it will just split everything into uh, its component. So here we have two. So this, the links is a connection between two individuals. So what it will do is, like this, it will take everything and split it into two columns. And here, because I, I add simplify true so that the output is a matrix. So this is what we have right now. So I took the names, uh, they were strings. I split them so that we have the connections between each individual and I convert it into a data frame. And now uh, I would like to, since I have the links, actually this is very similar to what we have talked about in previous lectures, which is an edge list. So similar to adjacency matrix, edge list is a structure in which you can save the, the content of a network. So here I take the, this matrix and I use cbind and add to it, to each link. Here we have the, the connection between each individual and here I have the tie. So the value or the weight of this connection. So basically now I end up with uh, a data frame and this data frame, it has three columns. The first two columns are the connections and the third column is the, is the weight of this connection or the th weight of this link. And finally, I pass it to iGraph. And what we end up with is a graph and this graph should be similar to the one we had here before, but there is something different here. So yeah, so here we have four connections and five individuals. Sorry, but here we have four connections and six individuals. So we will look deeper at this, but for now, is it clear what I'm trying to, sorry, what, I, what I'm trying to achieve here in, in this approach? Yeah, that, that was clear. I think it, that uh, this approach is the reverse version of the previous one. You So you remove first the uh, in, uh, in A values and, and then you split 
uh, split the close uh, variables into into the edge list or or the uh, the matrix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. S so is is that true? It's it's like the reverse uh, version of the previous one, or uh, no? Actually, it's it's not. So in in the first one, uh, so. Uh, broadly speaking, the first one, what we'd like to do is to have an adjacency matrix here. Uh, yeah. In this approach, what we'd like to get is an edge list. Okay, yeah. So this is the first difference. The second difference is here you have to, uh, first of all, make a matrix. So you'll have to have in your memory a matrix that is empty, and then you will need to populate each part of this matrix, and then to check for the rows, for the individuals that are missing any connections, and after all of this, you will end up with the adjacency matrix. But what I'm doing here is that uh, I'm just taking the vector, remove the NAs, and then make the adjacency matrix, uh, knowing the names of the columns. And with the adjacency matrix, I have uh, the links and I have the, the ties. So the tie here is the, the weight of each link. And now that we, this is the edge list, let's look at the row. So. Here the it's ties. So this this is the individual that we have used to make the, the matrix. As you can see here, that uh, the connection the number of, of links that we have is one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But here. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. But uh, here we have uh, between one and two, between one and three. And here we have between one and four, which is wrong, yeah? And, yeah. but the thing is, it's it's uh, it's not that it's wrong, but uh, let's, maybe I, I will come to this part next, but- uh, Okay, yeah. no problem, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for I now, think, I hope I, that- I think, the, I think the selected uh, row for this one is different from the previous one. Yeah. You, you insert so another the, row. The selected why... row. Ah, no, no, it's it's the same one. It's actually the same it's one. Me. Yeah. But because uh, in this function, uh, in this function, I assume that the uh, what, how how to say it. Uh, there was. Yeah. So in this function, there used to be I. There is something missing here, so I should add to another command here that remove the tie. So here I'm removing missing links, but I also need to remove zero links. Yeah. And here, let's do this. It's not zero. And let's start over. And I hope this time it works. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't zero part of the code for the data? So it signifies not knowing the person at all, but essentially it is data. So or this is, is the same as the name. Yeah, this is this is a really good question. Like this is the usually the question that you would uh, you would ask in research settings. Yeah, I don't know. So in in the book, I don't think that the the author made a distinction between NA or zero or even elaborated on the what each weight means or what is the scale of the weights or the range of the weights. Am I right about this or? I think that's that makes sense. Yeah, so I, uh, if, if you go through the book and you think that this is not the case, just please let me know and I, if this is wrong. Okay, but, no problem. Yeah, but now uh, I added this uh, link. So here, let's start over, we have the row. I make the row into a vector and I remove the NA. I also remove the zero links and I make it and it's four and five. So this is this is how the, the, the matrix looks like, yeah. Okay, so to move on, now we have two functions and what uh, just to, I, I, I've been going, uh, yeah, I've been speaking a lot about these two functions, but I don't want you to miss the main goal. The main goal is to uh, have a function that creates a network out of each row. So a network that represents the connections 
of each individual, not the connection of each individual, but the other important people that are connected to this person and what are the connections between them. Yeah, so this is why, why we have been doing all of this. Uh, but so, so far we have been using this, uh, this table that has all the connections, yeah? But usually when, when you're doing, uh, as we have done at the, at, uh, at the beginning, we have uh, visualized the data, not visualized the data, we explore the data and we looked at the missing data and all of this stuff. And if you just look here at this table, you can see that you have some rows where the respondent did have no idea maybe or about any of the of of those links so here you can see that for for this column for this row the respondent the entries here are all in a yeah so you can't make a network out of this and there is no need to have this row in your table and you might ask uh, is this missing or this is something is is part of the data so to know this we can go back to the original table so we can go to the G GSS and look at the number of uh, people. You know, we, we had a column called num given, which indicate the number of people that is close to this person and they are important to this person, yeah? So let's take the first row and let's take a uh, Num given. Oh, okay. As you can see, it's zero. Yeah. So when uh, in the survey, when this person was surveyed and it was asked about uh, the important person uh, that usually the, he, he or she uh, discuss important topics with, they said that, I don't know. I, I don't have anybody to talk with. Yeah, I'm an introvert or something. But uh, I don't have, I don't like to discuss with anybody. Yeah. So this is why. Uh, so here it's zero, and it makes sense now that we have this uh, missing. All the data here is, is missing. Yeah. So uh, now it's you, you can say that they are missing, or they say that uh, actually here they are not missing. They are part of the data. This person, they have no connections. So the the idea is now before doing any further analysis. It would it makes sense to get rid of all of these uh, rows, yeah, all of the respondents who don't have a network. So we are looking at ego networks; they don't have a network or an ego apparently. Is this clear? Yeah, yeah, that's clear. Okay, awesome, great. So what I what I will do here is to I uh, will take this this table and I will set all the values that are zero. First, what I will do, I would like to get rid of all this NA and I will get of, rid of all the rows in which the number of NAs equal to 10. So the number of uh, missing links equals the number of columns. So to do this, uh, I will first, uh, because zero and NA are the same, so I will make them the same value. So I will set all the values that are zero into NA. And then I will use a uh, representative. Ah, uh, yeah, here and here I will uh, use the function is in A and I will apply it row wise using the apply function. So the apply function, it takes the, a matrix and then uh, you can say whether to apply a certain function in a row wise or a column wise fashion. Uh, so previously I've, I've talked about row sums. So actually let's replace this with something that we have already used. So I will use row sums because we already have an idea about it. And it's it's better. So I will use row sums. Okay, so I will sum the values across the rows and I will compare it to the number of columns. Yeah. So what this means is that if I have a, a true value for a certain row, this means that the number of links that are missing equal to the number of columns. And this would mean that there is no network that you can structure for this respondent. And the next step is to remove those uh, individuals. Okay, and yeah, this is the clean matrix. So this matrix now have all the individuals that have at least reported uh, two individuals because 
uh, if you have one individual, yeah, but what if you have one individual? So if you have one individual, there will also be no links, yeah? So uh, you at least have to, in order to have a value in this, uh, in the rows, you'll at least have to report two important persons uh, so that you have a link between them. Uh, is, it, is it clear now? So what, what we have done to this, fun to this matrix? Uh, actually, I have uh, one question. Uh, yes, please. Could we could we do the same uh, cleaning process based on the num given variable? You you could do. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah, so you could do this, but then if you, for example, if someone said that uh, someone reported in the survey that he or she, this person knows two person, two others, and then there. Yeah. Uh, Originally, there were some values in the columns, but for some reason, there was something missing and you ended up with uh, values that are not there, yeah? So for example, this would be a mistake in data collection. You will have in the num given, you will have some numbers, you will have some individuals that are close to this respondent, but here, maybe it's, 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 it's not uh, something that you would expect from a good quality data, but maybe there would be no uh, connections here, yeah? So this would mean that if you have a function, uh, this function might throw an error because it expects at least one connection. Yeah. So I think oh, that uh, it's good actually to start by exploring your approach. I think this is the right way is to look at, to justify what you are doing and to ensure the quality of the data is to look at the num given, compare it with the, the number of missing links and then try to do the cleaning. So this is a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you too. Great. So uh, yeah. So now I will take this matrix, uh, and I will apply it, uh, apply the to this matrix the the function that was done by the author that uh, here. It's called make egonets, and the function that I have defined. Let's run both functions again so here. And here, yeah? So what do we have here? So in, this is a really long list uh, of I graph objects, yeah? So each list represents, each entry in this list represents a network from this matrix. So the numbers here of the entries equals the number of individuals. And also it's, the same thing here and the other one. So we have the same number. But as I will show you, uh, if we took, for example, the one, one network from the first object here, this is how it looks like. Let's plot it. This is the, the network. So this means that this person uh, reported four people that, uh, that are close to this person and they are all connected to each other based on the function defined by the author. Uh, if I use the, the one that I have defined here and take the same network here, we get something different. Yeah, so this is what I didn't expect. So there, there's something wrong uh, either in my code or something I, I copied or something, or maybe the, the function by the author, but I, I'm not sure if this is the case because yeah, let's let's see where, where things gone wrong. So this is the, the output from the function defined by the author. And this is the one that I've uh, defined. So to, to settle this down, we can actually go back to the data and look at the original row, yeah? So here we looked at the, the first entry, so the first uh, person. And this is the, the data that we have for this person. So this person, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five. So five links. And if we go back here, we can see that here we have six links based on the function defined by the author. Yeah. And here we could see that uh, there are no links between, for example, individual one and individual four. This link should be and should not be there. It's missing. But here we can see that this uh, these two individuals have link. So th there's something wrong here. Uh, so to see where did this go wrong? And yeah, and compare it to the other 
matrix, so this uh, network. So this network is as we, what we expect from this data. There is no, uh, there are no links between one and four, or one and uh, five because five is not there. But yeah, so there is something wrong. So let's maybe quickly try to see why this is giving the wrong uh, uh, results. So. Let's go back to the code from the author, make the scaffold for the data, populate the values. We have NA values, and we have one row that should be excluded. And when we run everything, we end up with this matrix. So here you see that uh, the, the, the mistake in this function is that it doesn't replace all the NA values, but it replaces only the one on the diagonal here. Uh, so you end up passing to iGraph function a matrix with NA values. So, and you can see here that this is the link between one and four and Actually, this was uh, a surprise to me that actually, if, if you pass something that is NA to iGraph, it would uh, translate this as if there is a, a, a link between the two. So I think this is where this function went wrong. And I'm, I'm not sure that it's uh, reliable. Uh, the results that you will get from this one is reliable. Is it clear wh where things went wrong? Yeah, I think that's clear. Uh, maybe we can just replace the NA with zeros to resolve that. Yeah, but also it it, it would be it would be better to revisit the, the the whole approach. Like for example, when when you think when you're making a function, you already have a certain goal, and each each step depends on the previous one. Yeah. So when you try to fix something that is near the end, uh, I think it would be better to revisit everything from the beginning. Uh, if maybe this approach is not optimal or you are missing something in the, in your, in, in the steps. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I, I can make a, a go to the GitHub of the book and maybe write an issue that we get different results when we try to do this and this. And also I have to say that still, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe also I have something wrong with my code, but I, I cannot prove this here. But anyway, I think that this was one of the fun things that I've uh, learned today, that there was something wrong with the code, uh, especially that it's not from my side. <laughs> and uh, I think we can stop here uh, because this, this, uh, this is all for uh, chapter eight. I thought that we would have enough time to go to chapter nine, but because I'm, I'm not good with timekeeping and I go to in length for each part of the code, I, and I, to be honest, I don't think that this is the best approach uh, for like a book club, but yeah, I hope it worked for you and you got the, the main concepts from this chapter. No problem. Thank you very much. I think we also have to review the chapter. Yeah, maybe. So before ending this, uh, do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, I'm, I'm all good as usual. Thank you. I actually like the non timekeeping part uh, more than not, but hey, that's just me. So I'll go with whatever's best for the book club, I guess. So, yeah, thank you. Awesome. Okay, guys. So that's it for today, and uh, see you in the next session. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Thank bye. you.